Hey guys, and welcome back to the third video in my Pygame uh, scroller game series. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the collision between the character and the different objects. And then I'm also going to be going over like what happens to the character. So for example, before nothing was happening, so we're going to have him like falling over. Uh, and then just a few other minor tweaks and kind of bug fixes for the program before we move into the final stage, which is going to be kind of scoring. Uh, like an end screen maybe uh, I'll see what I want to do with that so for right now uh, you may have noticed in the last video we did a hitbox for both the saw and for the spike but we didn't end up doing a hitbox for the character so what we got to do here now is do a hitbox for that and the reason I left that out of the other video is because it's a fairly complex kind of hitbox sequence because our character moves right like he's jumping up and down uh, he's sliding, so his hitbox is going to vary depending on what action uh, he's doing, right? So that's why I just wanted to save it for now to make sure that I could test it and everything was working um, and that I didn't give you an incorrect hitbox. So I've got those hitboxes now for you. Um, it's just going to be easier if I just copy and paste them in here and then I'll give you a second to copy them down. So it's very important where I'm placing this. So I'm in, this is my player class right here, and I'm in the uh, the draw method. So what I need to do here now is go to this first part. So when our character is jumping now, our hitbox, when our character is jumping is going to be placed right here. So just underneath the if statement, not inside of the if statement, just below it. Okay. And then this is what it's going to be. So self dot X plus four comma self dot Y and then self dot width minus 24. It's very important. And then self dot height minus 10. Make sure you copy that down, pause the video as I'm going to move on to the next one now. Okay, so our next hitbox is here. And this actually in, uh, involves us to type in a whole new section of code. So this is actually a two liner here. So I'm going to copy it and paste it in. So this is in our kind of bottom part here. Now, if you haven't noticed this part in the other tutorials, I added this into the GitHub uh, don't worry about it. Just if you don't have the most recent version and you don't have this or self dot slide up, uh, make sure you edit that. You can just fix that by looking at my class here. Now underneath our slide count equal equal to 80. So in, we're going to do another elif like this. So it's going to say elif and then slide count. So it's just all this right here. We want to copy this down. So if our slide count is greater than 20 uh, and less than 80, meaning that our character is actually lying down, that's what the image looks like then the hitbox is going to be this so it's going to be self dot x self dot y plus three self dot width minus eight and self dot height minus 35. okay copy that down again pause the video and now we'll move into the next part so the next hitbox is going to be right underneath where we're drawing everything so i'm going to do this and where we have slide count greater than 110 so we're still in this little ls statement here uh, underneath this we're gonna say self dot hitbox equals self dot x plus four self dot y self dot width minus 24 and self dot height minus 10 okay so the next hitbox goes just where we're running here so it's gonna go like this and there we are now we're just gonna add something else to this class so sorry I'll give you a second here you can copy this down so self dot x plus four self dot y self dot width minus 24 and self dot height minus 13 Okay, copy that down and now we'll move on to the next part. We're just going to add a, an attribute in our class here. So we're just going to say self dot and then up here it's going to be falling. And we're going to set this equal to false. Just so we, we can, we don't have to come back to this class after, we'll just do this now. And then right here uh, above this else statement, we're going to do an elif. We're going to say elif self dot falling. And then in here, we're just going to simply say win dot blitz and then we're going to do a picture it's going to be called fall and then in here we're going to say self dot x and self dot y minus 35 i believe earth well yeah 35 like that just so it moves our character down uh down a bunch i think that looks about right and then obviously if we're going to be drawing the picture of us falling that means we need to have the picture of us falling and sorry this isn't a minus this is a plus i keep getting mixed up because in pi game and we're going to leave it as 30 actually uh when you add to the y you move downwards it's so going to add plus 30 and then we need to get our image so you guys already have this image if you downloaded 
my uh, thing from the GitHub. If you download all those files, you will already have this image. So just type this in exactly as I do it. And I can say fall equals and then pygame dot image dot load. Same thing in here. We're gonna say os dot path dot join. Our folder is called images. And then this image, really easy, is called zero.png, just like that. Okay, there we go. We're finished with this player class now. And the hitbox for this should be working. Now, if we want to draw the hitbox, it's the very last step. Uh, just to make sure that everything really is working well, we'll go down to the bottom in our draw method. And we can just say pygame.draw.rect win. We'll draw it red again, just like the other ones. We're going to just draw pygame or self.hitbox like that. And then two so that we are drawing it uh, with two thickness. Then we'll go ahead, we'll run the program and we can just make sure our hitbox is working. And there we go. We can see we have our player hitbox like this. When he slides, it changes. Uh, it could, it should actually be changed a little bit different than that. So we're going to have to look into that for one second to make sure that, that everything is fine there. And you can see that we can jump over everything. The jumping hitbox works fine. Just the sliding hitbox that we're running into a bit of an issue with. So we'll make sure that we get that fixed right now. So in the sliding hitbox, the reason that we're running into an issue, I believe, is because we're drawing the hitbox in the wrong position. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to take this self-thought hitbox here um, that I have and that I've accidentally put in the wrong position. We're going to copy that. And we're just going to move it up in here so it has to be inside this if statement my bad make sure you just move that into here and then everything should hopefully be working fine yep there we go now everything looks to be working okay so now that everything's working it's time to move on to the next step which is going to be a uh, collision so now that we've have all the hitboxes uh pretty much perfect for at least our character our saw and our spike uh we're gonna do the collision between them so the way that i like to do this is just by adding a method inside of our uh, both our objects. So we could do one in our player, but it's just easier to do it in, in our objects. And we're just gonna call it collide. So we're gonna start off by going to our saw class, say define collide self, and then it's gonna take a rectangle. So what the rectangle is, is just gonna be the hitbox of our player pretty well. And then in here, we are simply just gonna type uh, if, and then we, let me just get this so I don't get this wrong here on my other screen. So if rect zero, which is the X position of our player, plus his width, this is the hitbox, right? Is greater than self dot hitbox. And that's gonna be zero because we're checking the X right now. And we have rect zero. Again, the X coordinate of our player is less than self dot hitbox. Zero plus self dot hitbox two, because that's our width. Like that and then so this checks if the x coordinates are within each other now that we have the x we have to check the y so since we're just checking the saw object here all we have to say is if the re rectangle one so that's our player's y position plus his height which is going to end up being his feet is greater than self dot hitbox one because we know that the uh character is never going to be below the uh the saw because it can't go lower than like that ground level we only have to bother checking if his feet are below where the top of the saw is it if so if the x are there and it's below the top of the saw then we know that it's collided so we can leave off one little part that we may have added for uh collision in different games so if that happens we're going to return true otherwise we are going to return false like that then we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this and we're gonna paste the same thing in our spike. We're gonna make one minor uh, tweak here. And it's just gonna be in the Y because if the X is the same thing. But for the Y, what we need to do is we're just gonna say if rect one, and then in this case is less than self dot hitbox one or hitbox three, sorry. And this is because we know that the uh, Y coordinate of our player is never gonna be above the uh, the top of the spike right he can't jump that high and we know how you can jump so we only have to bother checking if the uh y coordinate 
is then above the bottom of the spike. So the bottom of the spike, since it starts at zero, is just going to be equal to whatever the height of the spike is. Hope that makes sense. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So now that we've done that, what we need to do is we're going to have to check for collision. So we, we have the colliding methods, but we don't actually check it anywhere. So inside of our while loop, we already have it set up so that for every object, we're doing something, right? So we're moving the object and then we're checking if it's off the screen. So why don't we as well now check if it's colliding with the player? So we're going to say if object with two T's dot collide. And then inside of here, we're just going to do runner because that's what we named our player. I just keep calling it player uh, runner dot hitbox like that. And then if that happens, then we're going to execute uh, what happens when he's hit, right? So when he when he gets hit, uh, when we collide to something, then we're just going to say runner dot falling, which we set up earlier is equal to true. Now I'm also here just going to delay the game just so we know when he gets hit. So pygame.time.delay. I'm going to take this out later, but this is just going to show us where exactly he's getting hit. So for one second, it's going to pause so we can see it. And that should be good. So let's go ahead and check everything out here and make sure that everything's working fine. So we can see here we have our little guy. We're just going to wait for something to spawn onto the screen. And then we'll see if the objects collide. So actually, let me try to jump over this one. Oh, so we see they've collided. It keeps delaying the game because they've collided like a bunch of times. You can see collide, 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 collide. There we go. And we just ran into an issue here. Name fall is not defined. Oh, my bad there. When we come up here, we just need to say, sorry, this is inside our player class when we're drawing the fall, self.fall. Okay, let's run it one more time. See if everything's working again. So you can see our hitbox looks to be pretty good. Could be improved slightly, but I mean, it's not a huge deal for right now. And if we collide, then we fall down like that. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. And once that happens, obviously I'm not going to be delaying the game. So it's not going to look like this. He's just going to be sliding and falling. Uh, and yeah, awesome. All right. So now all we need to do is figure out what we're going to do once the player actually collides. So once he collides, we don't want to delay the game because we saw what's happening there, just lagging. Uh, what I want to do is I kind of want to pause the game. So I want to make it stop and then we can ask the player, uh, do you want to play again? Um, so on, maybe show a high score table. So I'll get that started now, but we're really going to be doing a lot of that in the next video. So I'm going to make a new function. I'm just going to call it define, uh, maybe call it reset. Yep. And what that'll do is it's going to reset all our global variables for us. So we'll do that inside of the function. And then it's going to maybe call uh, like the end screen to show us uh, that that good stuff there. Okay, so I'm just going to type pass in here for now, because I'm going to get on to that in the next video. So if this video was useful, and you guys liked it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to go over again those end screens and get into the final parts of the game. That's going to be the final video for this series.